Hey y'all, it's Bear, and today I'm gonna talk about poetry. And before you click off of this video, let me tell you that National Poetry Month is April, and I love poetry, and I do not talk about my love of poetry enough on this channel. I always feel like whenever I talk about poetry, or if I do a video specifically about poetry, it's not gonna get the views, but it is something that I care deeply about. It's something that I actually read quite a bit of, and something that I actively enjoy. So today I'm gonna show you some poetry recommendations. We're gonna talk about some poetry that's on my TBR, and I'm gonna talk about my personal poetry writing. I'm gonna read you a cringy poem that I wrote in the sixth grade that got published in a book. So we have Ice Bottle Dark with a Mouthful of Flowers, which experiences like queer life on the reservation. We have Nature Poem by Tommy Pico, which I talked about in a recent vlog that I will leave upstairs for you to check out. And this is about being a queer urban native. We have Postcolonial Love Poem by Natalie Diaz, which is fucking fantastic and is like sapphic poetry. We have This Wound is a World by Billy Ray Belcourt, and I just want to read you this little top blurb. It says, I am one of those hopeless romantics who wants every blowjob to be transformative, and that is very indicative of what's in here. We have My Woman Card is Anti-Native, Another Two Spirit Truths by Zemiula M. Tapapetul. And this one is just like straight up like political. Fuck you. I loved it. So moving on to probably the shortest book I own, that's Boy in Jeopardy by Ryan Douglas. This is around 30 pages, and it made me cry. I think eight times. It's so good. It explores the intersectionality of being like a queer black person. We have one that was sent to me by a publisher and that is Mr. Daydream by Diana Willen. This was sent to me by Poet's Choice. I have some more that I'm going to talk about later that are on my TBR. And this is about maladaptive daydreaming and it's also illustrated. So each poem comes with a little illustration that matches the maladaptive daydream that inspired the poem. Then we have goddess poetry, m mythological poetry. Uh, I have Aphrodite Made Me Do It by Trista Matir, which how many times have I talked about this book? This is one of my favorite things that I've ever read. It's like my go-to for self-care. And it's all about self-love, self-discovery, finding your inner beauty through pain, self-transformation, and has kind of two different poetic perspectives, one from the perspective of Tristan Matier, and then one from the perspective of Aphrodite herself. If you don't know, I'm pagan, and I have a relationship with Aphrodite, and this is one way that I work with her. Then we have Equipoise, Poems from Goddess Country by Shonda Buchanan. I read this one for Indigathon last year, and I really enjoyed it. And in Equipoise, each poem is sort of a letter to and a letter from different figures from lore. So you have people from the Greek lore, and you have people from African lore, you have people from native lore, and you have Christianity, and I thought it was very well done. Then we have I Am Not Your Final Girl by Claire C. Holland, and this one is one of the most unique poetry collections I own because each poem is titled after a different final girl from a horror movie. This book is also laid out in a couple of different sections. You have Assault, Possession, destruction, transformation, and like I said, each poem is based around the concept of a final girl from a slasher movie, and I couldn't, cannot recommend this one enough. If you're a horror fan who wants to get more into poetry, I think this is the perfect way for you to do that. And because it is poetry, even though it's a novel, I have Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga. I really enjoyed this. It's a novel in verse from the perspective of a Syrian Muslim girl who comes to America. It explores the concept of home, and family and loss. It goes through so much and I can't tell you how much I love this book. I cried basically the whole time. And although it seems long, it is in verse, so it doesn't take that long to get through. Okay, now moving on to TBR books. I have more books from Poet's Choice. I have Corona Global Lockdown, which is from the perspective of a bunch of different poets dealing with lockdown and COVID. I have To the Newspaper, which is different epigraphs and obituaries and stuff like that. We have A Feudal Attempt at Delaying the Inevitable, Jumbled, volume two. And the one I'm kind of most intrigued by right now, and that's Suicides and Murders. Like, I have two books of poetry that were sent to me by Tin House Books. Like I mentioned, they sent me Nature Poem by Tommy Pico. They also sent me Junk and Feed, both of which kind of follow the same vibe of Nature Poem. Then I have a memoir in verse, which was sent to me by Living Corrido, and that is Apple Skin to the Core by Eric Gansworth. This is already published, so you can already go get the book. Then we have one I got for Christmas, and that's Note to Self by Connor Franta, as you can see here. This one I'm very excited about. Connor Franta is my one remaining, like, early 2000s YouTube crushes. Hi, you're not watching this video, but if you are, 
DM me on Twitter. I don't know how much of this book is actually poetry. I think this is just like an aesthetically pleasing thing that he put together. But there is poetry in it, so I did want to include it. And then we have one that was sent to me from my Amazon wishlist. Unfortunately, the note is not here. So if you sent this to me and you're watching this video, please let me know so I can thank you properly. And that is Full Metal and Digiqueer by Joshua Whitehead. Y'all know how much I loved Johnny Appleseed. I love Joshua Whitehead's writing. I'm so excited for this one. Different like little sections in here. I'm so excited for this. This is going to be like weird and I'm excited to experience this. So that's all the poetry that's on my TBR currently. There are a lot more that I want to get to, but I want to get through these first before I move on to something else. And finally, we're going to read my cringy ass poem that I wrote in the sixth grade. I had an English teacher named Miss Hawkins. Hello, you're also not watching this video. If you are, hi. She was very supportive of my writing. She um, was very active in me getting things published. She sought out competitions that I could submit things to. I don't know if they accepted every single submission because mine didn't like win one of the top three prizes but I still did get like an award for it. So I don't know if they accepted every submission and that's why I got picked or what. I'm about to read you. This is one of the cringiest things I'd ever written. So it is on page 91 and it is called Life. God, I... Mm. A maze of truth, a web of lies. Poor people humble, rich ones idolized. Ugh, oh god. <laughs> Clouds and rain, fire and ice, wind and earth. A robin tweets twice. What the fuck is this? Here's, here's, here's like the part though, right? Nothing is fair, nothing is free. From being a kid to age 93, from losing a job to failing a test, this life we're living, make it the best. I have like chills from how uncomfortable I am by this. It can happen so fast, it can end so quick, but face it, that's life. So just get over it. Y'all, I really thought I was gonna be like the next Edgar Allan Poe with this. And for what? I think this got me like $30 and a cert like a certificate, right? And I was so excited. I thought I was the shit. I showed that certificate off at school. I had it like tucked into the front of my binder. Like, I, I thought I was just like the coolest person ever. And everyone was like, oh, that's cool. You fucking weirdo. I had to go to a PTA meeting and PTA meetings at my school were a big deal. Like it was like a full assembly where like every single kid and all of their parents would show up. I didn't want to do this, <laughs> but they made me stand in front of all of these people on a stage and perform this poem. It was like maybe like 400 people, right? So I performed that poem for 400 people. And then afterwards I cried in the bathroom and threw up. And now I just performed it for, for 3K. For 3,000 people, I just performed that poem. So, you're welcome. All right, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, then you can let me know by leaving a thumbs up and subscribing and hitting the bell and all that good shit, as well as answering the comment question of the day, which is gonna be, what's your favorite poetry collection? Who's your favorite poet? And what kind of poetry do you like? If you don't have time, you don't have the spoons, or you don't want to answer, then let me know you made it all the way until the end of the video by leaving me either a yellow heart emoji or a smiley face if you're on a keyboard. All my social media links and places to support me further will be linked downstairs if you want to find me on Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, TikTok, Facebook. You can click the link tree at the top of my bio. All right, I'll see you next time with another video. All right, cool. Thank you for watching. Bye!